Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, I'm wondering what would happen if I used all of the wrong colours. What do I mean by using the wrong colours? Well, we all think that trees are green, but why can't we have a purple tree? Why can't we have a blue tree? Why has the sky got to be blue? So today I'm just going to experiment and see what happens if I use completely different colours. What would be the outcome? Would it actually look that bad? So this is going to be a, a real time video. So you're going to see this from start to finish. I'm using a photo I found online of a local country park. So I'm just going to quickly draw this in. So we've got some trees on hillside. And I'm going to put a line of trees down this right hand side. It's going to be very quick and quite loose with these. There's a bit of landscape in the distance. And then we've got a field of like a meadow, flower meadow down here. Right all I need to do. I'm going to grab number six round brush. I'm going to grab some violet and put some water down on on the paper there. So I've got some wet areas, some dry areas. Let's see what happens. And honestly, I have not planned any of these colours I'm literally going to just dip into the palette just gonna see what happens really take some orange and some green I'm not using any colour theory here at all I'm not thinking about complementary colours I'm literally just selecting colours from the palette so rather than using normally more blue tints for the background distant trees let's go for a, a red a Prussian blue for some of these trees so I'm just going to put these first layers down and then we can decide what's going to happen Alizarin Crimson for this hillside. But let's take some of the violet and mix that in, just blend that in as we come down. I'm not worried at all about how this is bleeding into different things. I'm gonna just break all of the rules, all of the normal things that I might I might tell you to do. And then we can put some detail over the top once this is dried. brown not something I would normally use by itself uh, let's use ultramarine blue I 
Right, let's give that a dry. And that is looking really, really good. I'm just going to take a larger brush. This is a number eight round brush. I'm just going to glaze over some areas just to make them a bit stronger. Great thing about sketchbooks is they could just be an experiment. They really don't have to be neat and tidy. I've no idea how this is going to turn out. So we're just going to have to see really. So let me work on the trees now. Now initially I'd put a thallo blue. So let's go back in. Quite like the red that's sitting underneath that. The initial wash has actually run out into the sky, but that doesn't matter. And the same on this side. This has got the blue underneath it, but actually I think I'm going to take some cadmium red, put that on first. And then take some of the thallo blue, I'm just gonna drop that in. Allow the, the paint just to flow. I might need just a little bit more. Cool, right. Let that bit dry, so I'm going to work on the, the foreground. So let's let's take a rigger brush and let's go for purple I'm just going to lay some marks down to begin with thigh blue just let this all bleed and blend These are all grasses in this area, so I could just let that blend. I want a little bit of this to kind of resemble some parts of the landscape, but we're getting that colour come through. Let's change to orange. Again, I, I, I don't know that these colours are going to kind of work together, but we'll we'll see. Let's allow that to blend in, and then we can use let's use some brown, so this is burnt sienna. some red and we'll pick up some of that color let's put some tall grasses coming through shall we let's do some splattering Some of 
those. Going to take a large flat brush. And I'm just going to add some texture to this heel because then it gives it a bit of shape. Gives you an impression of what's going on. Let's wash that out. And I'm thinking it just needs a little bit more of something there, but I'm not sure what. Let's pick a colour. Phthalo blue, as we've used that already. We use that to put some flower heads. to the purple I'm trying to avoid using something like a yellow or green for these flowers because that's what we expect them to be let's use some orange well, I'm trying to do this really quickly. Ultramarine blue. I think this just needs a little bit of definition. Go to a thin brush and let's put some red tree trunks in. Okay, let's give that a quick dry. Right, finish off. I've got four different colored pencils. Let's just put some outlines in this. Just a few little marks. Randomness. really thinking about this I'm literally just scribbling across just give it some movement using all the wrong colors just trying to be a bit creative really let's put some some birds in tape off so there we have it all the wrong colors actually sometimes it doesn't matter I think that looks quite good as a contemporary watercolor sketch got some nice colors going on we've got different marks we've got hard edges we've got soft edges we've got some detail we've got some splattering we've got some blending on the page it doesn't take much to create something that's got a lot of movement and color in it so I hope you've enjoyed that I hope you've learned something there about colours and colour mixing and actually 
you don't need to concentrate too hard on what colours you use. You can define elements of the landscape with a few marks. You can create something that's quite exciting, it's got movement, it's got atmosphere, it's got a sense of place. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Please give it a thumbs up if you have. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Until next time, take care.